In this video, we're going to look at another tool that can be used to help us find zeros of polynomial functions a little more quickly, especially in cases where the rational zeros theorem gives us too long of a list. So this idea we're going to look at is called the theorem on bounds. Let's go ahead and take a look. Our goal here is to find the zeros of a polynomial function and let's take a look at this example. Our function is f of x equals 12x to the fourth power plus 22x to the third power minus 30x squared minus 66x minus 18. This is degree 4 so we should expect to find four zeros. So the place we begin is our rational zeros theorem. So we look at uh, our p-factors, which are factors of negative 18 in this case, and our q-factors, which are factors of 12 in this case. And if we make every possible ratio of p divided by q, we have our list of possible rational zeros. And in this particular example, it is a very long one. We have 32 total possibilities. So I have them listed here in order from least to greatest. And our goal is to try to narrow this list down as we go. So here's a look at a graph of the function. You could use your graphing calculator or a Desmos website to get a graph of the function. And we can clearly see that there are four x-intercepts uh, for the graph of this function, which means there are four real zeros. You might also notice that all of those x-intercepts are between negative 2 and 2, which means all four zeros should be between negative 2 and 2. If we look at our list of possible rational zeros, many of these are not between negative 2 and 2. So based on the graph, we can eliminate a whole bunch of these right off the bat. In fact, if I do that, if I remove any numbers less than negative 2 or greater than positive 2, we go from 32 possibilities all the way down to 18 and we haven't even really started yet. Now you might not have a graphing calculator or access to a website especially when you're taking your exam so the question is is there a way to do this without looking at the graph? And the answer is yes. So this is called the theorem on bounds. So suppose we have a polynomial function with real coefficients and a positive leading coefficient and we use synthetic division. So theorem on bounds tells us two things. If we are dividing by a positive value of c, and what we end up with are all non-negative numbers on the bottom row of our synthetic division, and non-negative means either negative or either positive or zero. If that's the case, then c is an upper bound for the zeros of our polynomial function, which means we have no zeros greater than that number. So if we divide by a positive number and this happens, we can eliminate more than just that number. We can eliminate anything on our list that is greater than that number. And then if we are dividing by a negative c value, then we're looking for something different. We're looking for whether or not the terms in the bottom row alternate in sign. And if there's a zero in there, that can count as either or. If that's the case, then we can eliminate more than just c. We can eliminate anything less than c because c is a lower bound for the zeros of our polynomial function. So if we have these two ideas in the back of our mind as we start dividing our polynomial by numbers off of our list, we can potentially eliminate more than just the number we tried. And with a list of 32 potential zeros, that's something we might want to do. So let's go back to our example. Here are our 32 possible rational zeros. I'm going to start with one like I usually do. So if we do our synthetic division, we get 12. 12 times 1 is 12. 22 plus 12 is 34. 34 times 1 is 34. I add, I get 4. I multiply, I get 4. I add, I get negative 62. I multiply, I get negative 62. And I add, and I get a remainder of negative 80 which means one is not a zero. So obviously we can eliminate one. Then we want to look at this bottom row of coefficients and determine if they are non-negative. And in this case, they are not. So at this point, we can only eliminate one. So now I would try two. 
and I'm going to do synthetic division. I get 12, the product is 24, the sum is 46, the product is 92, the sum is 62, the product is 124, the sum is 58, the product is 116, and I have a remainder of 98. So 2 is also not a 0. But notice also that the bottom row here are all positive numbers or non-negative numbers, which means we can eliminate anything on our list greater than 2. And we can also exclude 2 because we just found that 2 is not a 0. So at this point, I've done synthetic division twice, but in fact, I have eliminated 8 values off my list because I can eliminate more than just 1 and 2. I can eliminate all the rest of the numbers on my list greater than 2. So this is all about getting more for your money with synthetic division. I've done synthetic division twice. I've eliminated eight potential zeros off my list. So now let's try some negative values and look at the second part of the theorem. So back to my list. I'm going to try negative 1. I bring down the 12. My product okay. is negative 12, my sum is 10, my product is negative 10, my sum is negative 40, my product is positive 40, my sum is negative 26, my product is 26, and the remainder is 8. I can eliminate negative 1 because it's clearly not a 0. So what we want to look for here is that bottom row of numbers and if they alternate in sign, and in this case they do not, which means all I can eliminate at this point is negative 1. So now I'm going to try negative 2. I'm going to do my synthetic division. My product is negative 24. The sum is negative 2. Product is 4. Sum is negative 26. Product is 52. Sum is negative 14. Product is 28. My remainder is 10. I can eliminate negative 2. It is not a 0. Also, I want to look at the bottom row. Do they alternate in sign? The answer is no, which means I'm going to have to try another one. If I try negative 3, product is negative 36, sum is negative 14, product is 42, sum is 12, product is negative 36, sum is negative 102, product is 306, my remainder is 288. Negative 3 is also not a 0. But notice here my bottom row alternates in sign. I have positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, which means we can eliminate more than just negative 3. We can also eliminate anything on my list less than negative 3. So from these three trials of synthetic division, I've eliminated another seven numbers off my list. So altogether, I've done synthetic division five times, and I have eliminated 14 zeros off my list. So again, I started with 32, and now I have 18. So essentially, I achieved the same thing using this theorem on bounds as I did just looking at the graph. So now I have a shorter list of numbers to try, and at this point I'm going to have to start trying them. Um, let's try negative 3 halves. If I try negative 3 halves, I bring down the 12. The product is negative 18. The sum is 4. Product is negative 6. Sum is negative 36. Product is 54. Sum is negative 12, product is 18, and I have found a 0. Negative 3 halves is a 0. Don't forget, once you find a 0, we've got a degree 4 polynomial. We have found one of the zeros, which means there are probably three more, and those three zeros have to come from our quotient polynomial, which in this case is 12x cubed plus 4x squared minus 36x minus 12. So when I continue my search for the rest of the zeros, I'm not going to start over with f of x. I'm going to look at this quotient polynomial and find the other three zeros from, from this. So I'm going to take the coefficients from my new quotient polynomial, and I'm going to try another number off my list, negative one-third. I bring down the 12, I multiply, I get negative 4, the sum is 0, the product is 0. Sum is negative 36, product is 12, and I just found another zero. I'm a lucky guy here. So it looks like negative one-third is our second zero. And again, every time you find a zero, we reduce the degree of our quotient polynomial. Now all that's left is 12x squared minus 36. And my other two zeros have to come from this polynomial. 
And once it's a quadratic equation, you can just solve it using any of our other methods. We do not need to keep doing synthetic division. I'm just going to solve this equation. I can factor out a 12. Uh, it looks like x squared is going to have to be 6 for this to be a 0. And x squared equals 6 has two solutions, the square root of 6 and the negative square root of 6. So those are my other two zeros. So I have found all four zeros, negative 3 halves, negative 1 third, and then plus or minus square root of 6. Notice I have two rational zeros, and they were uh, values from that list of 32 potential zeros I started with, and the other two zeros were irrational, so those are not on my list anyway. So don't forget, we're not going to be able to find all the zeros using synthetic division necessarily. Some of them might be non-real, some of them might be irrational. So don't forget to reduce that polynomial every time you find a zero. So hopefully this helps. Uh, like I said, if you have a really long list, this can help get you uh, your zeros a little bit faster, so don't be afraid to use this.